Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Brigaton. Let's enter the brothel. I'll go ahead. Wait. Rusalai stares nervously at the door of the building you're walking past. Do you know this place? This is a brothel called the Ten Thousand Delights, the biggest and the most popular one in all of Lucian Ira. Yes, I know what it is. I have some unfinished business in there. Of course, I understand. All kinds of business are conducted there, not only pleasure related. I'd like to ask you about something. If you ever have to go in there, please go without me. I don't want to see the inside of that place ever again. I especially don't want to meet any of its denizens. Why? This is my former life. I prefer to leave it all behind, in the past. My old acquaintances, accomplices, clients. I don't want to run into any of them. I think the best way to overcome your inner demons is to face them head on. And it's not like we're dropping her off at like it's a daycare. We're gonna be there with her to help her guide her through whatever may happen inside. So I'm actually gonna take option two. I would like to accommodate her. I mean, bringing Darren or even Regil along would probably be more fun. But I think this might be a big step for her in her uh, redemption arc. I can't promise you that. You know the city better than anyone else. I might need your help. Fine. Rushlight looks drained and discouraged. Alright. I understand. Needs must. Well now I feel bad. I thought my reasoning was sound. Rockhorn. Wow. Look what the cat drag did. Muscular Incubus grins at Rushlight. Hey, why so shy? Come here. Give your old pal a hug. Ha ha. Hello, Rockhorn. Rushlight answers quietly, without looking into his eyes or making any move toward him. Lots of gossip about you floating around. Some say that you've sided with the mortals now. He shoots a quick glance at you. You live among them. You walk around with them. Lucky you. Always have your snacks and kicks within arm's reach. How did you pull that off? Care to share your secret? There's no secret, Rushlight sighs. You know, Rockhorn, I'd be happy if you followed my path, but I'm afraid you wouldn't like it. She has changed. Mortal souls aren't a snack for her anymore. Yeah, sure. The Incubus grins. Did she tell that? Did she, did she tell you that herself? It's true, Rockhorn. I'm not the Rushlai you used to know. Sure, of course. Rushlai repented. Now she's a righteous saint. The Incubus presses his palms against each other in a fake prayer. All pure and innocent. She will never again come up with an idea to flay a loving couple to make an elegant dress out of their skins. Heh <laughs> heh. Why are you wincing? Am I not telling the truth? No, my friend. The only one who's telling lies here is you. You're wrong. You just don't know. I... I... Alright. Get away from her right now. The smug grin vanishes from the Incubus's face. Glancing angrily at you and frowning. He turns away. Now you see. That's exactly why I didn't want to come back here again. Rockhorn can get under my, uh, other's skin. Literally and figuratively. Thank you for getting rid of him. I hope that worked. Hey. Another portal. Cool. Right, so Shavaro is the head here. She ousted Monago at some point. Huh? Alright, this seems unique. So Marmonux is challenged by Kreesh Circa or Kirka. Or Zuna bit her nail in frustration. Wait, pause this. But they remembered another term of their wager. Hope you didn't forget the last one from my final list. Marmonux chuckled and rolled his eyes. How could I forget the Omox? I have to say, your fantasies almost left me stumped this time, dear sister. Almost. The succubus let out a cat-like hiss, not bothering to hide her annoyance. Don't tell me you found a way to please a living puddle of refuse. Oh, did I ever. Marmonux moaned theatrically, barely holding back laughter at the sight of Orzuna's twisted face. You don't believe me? Amateur. You are half as versed as me. You know that you shouldn't force your caress on your prey. Sometimes it's worth letting them take the initiative. After pausing and enjoying the succubus's cute, 
confused expression to the fullest. Incubus dropped uh, to a breathy whisper. Nomox exalts his enemy by covering them head to toe, washing over their mouth and nose, creeping inside, down the throat, deeper and deeper. So why not follow its lead and let it revel in its desire to dominate and smother? I love accepting pain just as much as I love inflicting it. Razuna's face wrinkled in disgust. Out of everyone I know, only you, brother, could be aroused by the memory of how you were, were had by a clump of fetid, caustic crap. But what can you do? The condition is met. That's right, murmured the Incubus. The condition is met, and so is the entire challenge. One thousand denizens of the Abyss, of all shapes and sizes, have had the taste of my hands, my whip, and my loins, and experienced the pinnacle of delight. All you can do is admit that my art of pain bears more fruit than your art of seduction. It seems you'll become a little pet after all, Rizuna. The terms were agreed upon for losing the wager. I prepared a special collar just for you, the sharpest one from my collection. Her laugh rang like the tinkling of, a of tiny poisonous bells. Oh no, brother. One thousand and one denizens of the abyss. Don't you remember? You have one more creature left. Orzuna snapped her fingers. With a clang, the wheels began turning, lifting a massive hatch and revealing to Marmanux the bowels of the most concealed of Orzuna's pleasure dungeons. In the darkness, he heard wet wriggling and faint whispers that could drive a mortal insane. Something large was rolling under and round in the cellar scraping the walls, hissing, making smacking sounds, all while exuding waves of hatred. In a single glance, Armanux knew who, or what, was before him. A clip off he drawled, in the very depths of the abyss I take it. Anything for my dearest brother, Orzuna licked her lips. A knot of tentacles, stingers, and suction cups, topped off with bitter hatred for our kind. Does it feel pleasure? See if you can find out. And this time, the psychopath stroked her body in a sultry motion, and join her palms together between her legs. I'm going to watch. Okay. Well, we were in a brawl, though. I should have expected that. <laughs> Follow my lead. I finished here. Is there more? Large demon guard and a chain collar stands by an inconspicuous door, toying with the miniature magic wand. He addresses you with a frown, though his voice is polite. Can I help you? Now what's behind that door? The upper city. Our guests often use this door, as they are far too important to be seen on the streets of the middle city. I want to go through that door. Feel free to do just that. You're not riffraff. This door is made for people like you. The guard forces out a polite grin. I'm not done talking to you. Now the demon scowls at you, glancing warily at his chain collar and clutching a magic wand in his clawed hand. Uh, the magic toy you're holding is some sort of a weapon. The demon looks at the wand with disgust. Some weapon. This is a teleportation wand. A Shivaro has grown concerned about security recently. He said something had happened, we should expect unwanted guests. She ordered the guards to arm themselves with these things and toss any troublemakers onto the street at the first hint of danger. Since then, I no longer take pleasure in my job. No more crushing heads, no more gutting. Who are these guests who've got Shavara so scared, I wonder? It's probably me. Uh, what is that collar around your neck? That's none of your biz- The collar clanks ominously and grows a little tighter. The demon gulps, frightened, and his tone becomes more polite. We call them politeness collars. Shavara ordered all the guards to wear them. But rude to the guests allowed them to break the rules. The collars start to tighten or decapitated. This is a weird option because he already said he'd let me pass. If you won't let me pass, I'll treat you as Dresden's commander should treat a demon. If it's on the list of services, then talk to the madam. I'm not opposed to the idea, but if you're trying to intimidate me, it didn't work. I have the slightest idea where Dresden is, what kind of commanders it has, or what they do to demons. I have to go. Right, get lost. The chain collar clanks on the demon's neck, and he hastily corrects himself. I mean, have a good night. <laughs> so nothing in there. It's weird that I could go in there then. It's the upper city. How do I get to the... 
Melia doesn't have anything to say. Well, let's talk to Shavaro, I guess. Let's quick save before we do so. Uh, let's actually talk... I didn't see these names. Uh, let's go talk to Rockhorn again. He looks so delicious. Should I make this quick? Oh, no, thank you. How about Herax? We're always uh, happy to see you in the 10,000 Delight, sir. Mad Glowworm? You know, we Fae lo have magic of our own. You'll love it. Alright, I guess we'll talk to Shavaro first. An attractive Lulidu in a simple but revealing dress greets you with a warm smile. Riley's face is serene. A new guest. We're always happy to welcome guests to the 10,000 Delights. I'm Shavaro, ruler of this palace of pleasure. The only two booze here are brawling, moderation, and talking politics. Aside from that, anything goes. As my guest, you can expect to receive gentle caresses, or if you prefer, wild and untamed ones. I have servants of every type to suit every taste. Any of them can be yours for a night, or forever, if your pockets are deep enough. What are your preferences? Never mind, I'll find out for myself. The, li the Lilidu, so hard to say, tilts her head to one side, as if studying you with her non-existent eyes. Oh, I failed. You feel warm. Gentle hands seem to touch your consciousness. They nearly separate thoughts from memories, feelings from emotions. Occasionally, images of long past or recent events drift through your mind. Eglarion, I see. Yes, and the commander of the crusade no less. What fascinating memories you have. Ah, now we've been properly introduced. You're not offended, are you? The Lilidu gives a deep, pleasant laugh, but her voice trembles with inexplicable excitement. Don't you dare pry into my mind ever again. The Lilidu answers defiantly. Or else what? You'll hit me? You can try. But you're my guest here. You don't call the shots. I do. Let's start with questions. I have a few questions for you. The demoness smiles mysteriously. Are you interested in me? Or in my establishment? I want to know more about this place. Some are foolish enough to call this place a brothel, but that's a facile misrepresentation. Now, the 10,000 Delights is a pleasure palace for every taste. You'll find everything that brings pleasure here. Wine, sex, music, good company, violence, gossip, stories, drugs. Every kind of drug. Herbal, alchemical, even telepathic. And many things that seem incomprehensible to us, but are very popular on the other planes. You've seen but a small part of the 10,000 Delights. Behind these inconspicuous doors lies entire streets, houses, and rooms. A veritable labyrinth of pleasure. No one knows how large this place really is. Anyone who attempts to measure it returns weeks later, exhausted and happy, and somehow changed from when they left. After all, no matter who you are, no matter what your predilections, in the 10,000 Delights, You'll find the room where you'll be fully satisfied. I wish I could see what this fiend would say if she met Arshia, the luminous lord of freedom, beauty, and sincere physical intimacy. The abyss offers a distorted reflection of everything we value in the upper planes. Even physical attraction, beauty, and love. I see. The lady bites her lips seductively. Trust me, of all the places to visit in Elushanira, this should be at the top of your list. Tell me your story. The demoness answers with melodious laughter. I have secrets I'd rather not reveal, and without them, my story would be as stupid as sex without violence. After a moment's hesitation, the Lidu adds with a smile. I was once wild and dangerous. I manipulated others to destroy them, not subdue them. But then I met someone. That meeting changed everything. It sparked my hunger. I wanted to stand for something, rise above the crowd, become important, influential. It turned out that not only can I create bloody chaos, but I can tame wild whirlwinds of chaos, shape and direct them. None of that would have happened but for that chance encounter. You were a skilled mind reader. The Lilidu gives you a smug smile. It is my calling. To read others' thoughts and motives, plant ideas in their minds, tempt and guide them. But yes, you are correct. I am unusually skilled even by the standards of my kind. With a playful bow of her head, the Lilidu smiles. Have you heard that old saying, Why don't Lilidus have eyes? Because eyes are the windows to the soul. No one can gaze into the soul of a Lilidu. Of a Lilitu. 
I understand everything. The mysterious smile, the lady who nods at you. I'm looking for the spinner of nightmares. Do you know her? Yes, she lived here for a long time. She owned several rooms. The den of sweet horror, she called them. You can easily find them. Let's look for a bunch of crazy, drugged up cultists. Those degenerates were the spinner's entourage. When she left the 10,000 delights, she left them here so we could entertain ourselves with them. I like to hire several succubi to entertain the arena champion, Gelderfang. They're currently serving a special client in the upper city. As you surely understand, the caresses do not come cheap. You have 40,000 gold by chance. Uh, pay 40,000 gold coins. Where can I find them? The image of a luxurious mansion in the upper city appears in your head. The building moves further and further away, as if you're soaring up into the sky, uh, so you see where it is located. This place is called the Palace of Incest and Degeneracy. Okay. <laughs> You'll find the girls there. Tell them you've already paid me. My friend Camellia would like to avail herself of your brothel's special services. I beg your pardon, but our establishment cannot provide that type of service at the moment. You see, I have a rather delicate problem. Madam trails off, letting the unspoken words hang in the air. Do me one favor, you consider us the best of friends. Javara smiles seductively. I need you to kill someone. A brazen gang of demons keeps harassing my girls, attacking them on the street and dragging them back to their lair in the lower city. A foul den called the Rotten Guttery. Spill their blood, rescue my girls, and come back here for your reward. The words of this fiend sound sweet, but what lurks behind them? Lust? A desire to use you? Something even more insidious. I sense danger here, like the reek of decay near a crypt, faint but clear. Beware this trap, champion. You won't let my girls die in the clutches of those monsters, will you? The demoness smiles enticingly. You are so confident and have so much potential. I think you and I will enjoy being friends. I'm only asking this to see what she says. Um, I like you. Perhaps we can spend the night together. Interest flickers in the leader's face, but her answer is brusque. I think you're used to people falling into your arms. Don't expect it of me. My favor must be one, but you seem entirely capable of it. Right, I'm leaving. See you soon, honey. Come back again and we'll have some fun. Alright. So we found cultists behind this room here. I wonder if these are the drugged up cultists for the uh, Spinner of Nightmares. I used to be bothered by insects crawling under my skin, but now I've realized I'm a giant termite hill. I am their home. That should be a Discari cultist, right? That is not far. I feel like there's probably a door that I should be seeing right now. Oh, uh, more event honey tongued. Let's see this person back here. Oh, the succubus in the corner bites your full lips and throws pleading glances at you, but it doesn't look like she's pleading for love. The demon guard stands nearby. You, sir, have such a martial look about you, and that body. I immediately picked you out uh, from the crowd. Please spare me at least a moment of your time. I am more of a honey-tongued, and I've been waiting for you. Uh, you wanted to talk about something. Oh, yes. Dereeks? Dereeks, I don't know what to do. Succubus hides her face in her hands. Either kill me or get me kicked out of here. And I don't know which is worse. Now what happened? Who is Zerix? Succubus clutches her hands to her chest. Zerix is a powerful demon. I was so flattered when he noticed me. But then he grew jealous. He complained that I spent too much time with other, the other guests. Then he started killing them. I'm so afraid he'll kill me out of jealousy. Succubus looks at you closely, as if checking whether you believe her. There is no one else who can help me. I am powerless, and no one can protect me outside the walls of the brothel. Another succubus trying to convince us to kill some awful beast. Now what does this remind me of? Is it going to turn out that this one isn't telling us the full story either? Rushlai blushes, but her voice is firm. Lan, how many more times must I apologize? I made a mistake. I'm ashamed of what I did. What do you hope to gain by reminding me of it over and over? How can I prove to you I'm not using you this time? 
stupid question. How can you? Anyway, I'm just muttering to myself. Pay no attention to the uncouth mongrel simpleton. I don't think you're telling me everything. For an instant, the succubus's perfect face turns angry and unpleasant, but it quickly passes. You don't trust me because I sell my love for money. If I lie to guests here, it's only to make them happy. How can I help you? Murder is forbidden in the 10,000 Delights, so I set up a date with Zareeks on the roof, not far from here. I beg you to kill him, and I will pay you with such pleasure that you will never again be tempted by anyone else. Bring me his ring, and you'll learn what my honey tongue can do. But this will not be your only reward. Well, killing more demons isn't a bad thing, so fine. I'll teach Zareeks some manners. The succubus takes a deep breath, her chest heaving. Oh yeah, it feels so good. You find him nearby, on the rooftop where he likes to look for new victims. There's a place to the left of the upper city gates, where you can climb to his perch with ease. But I beg you, as soon as you get rid of him, please bring me his ring, or I will never feel safe again. I don't know if I want to read this. Uh, I like you, what can you do? It's like it shows her long, narrow tongue, wriggling like a snake. <laughs> My tongue will make you feel as sweet as if honey were dripping from it. It can penetrate, entwine, and slide. I would I would have given you a taste of my honey for a reasonable price, but it just isn't possible. When I have a spare moment, I'll return to you. Succubus meets your eyes. I'm willing to wait for you until the end of time. Alright, so I'll we need to find... Ahead. Let me look at this other quest. Den of Sweet Horror. Where is that at? I feel like I'm missing something obvious. I know the way. Is it over here? Do I need to teleport over there? Follow my lead. I don't see any other ways to get to that location. Let me do, I'm gonna quick save, I'm gonna try and use, I have one casting of Dimension Door left with my wand. No, I sold it, didn't I? I mean, the camera won't let me pan very far that way. I don't think there's anything over there. So I'm not sure what I'm missing. As it should be. Uh, we won't be at it right now. Let's let's do something else. In fact, we have that bridge that I take care of because I keep forgetting about it. So maybe we'll go do that next. Uh, right here. Time's not waiting. I am prepared. Yeah, the uh, the brothel wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. We're not done in there. Let's check one more thing. But they're loot quite yet. Hmm. I know what to do. That is not far. I'm wondering if we need something for the bridge, though. 
I didn't interact with it previously. And I wonder if there's something I need for these slots. What's on your mind? I wonder. No, it rotates. Wait. Oh, they don't rotate back to the same spot. Okay. This does a full. All right, so these. Oh, I see. So if I do this, if I shimmy it, it looks like they don't always move at the same distance. So eventually if I just keep doing this, maybe if I even do it with one of them, no, I can't do it with one of them because they always end up in the same positions. But using both, it looks like they slowly like jostle themselves into position. All right, I decided to throw in an edit. I was doing my shimmy strategy for a long time and I wasn't getting anywhere. So I got bored, decided to put one of my characters on a platform to see what would happen and it locks it in place. So I think this is how you're supposed to solve this, not what I was doing earlier. <laughs> Goddess protects us. You stay right there. Thank you. Focus on the goal. Much less time consuming this way. I still think the way I was doing it earlier would have eventually netted me the correct combination. But no telling how long that would have taken. Help me sway from my path. Hope she didn't quite make it. Whoopsies. Wait, was that the salute? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Been doing this for too long, man. Should be this one. Please allow me. I'm always open to ideas. Welcome, respite. Whenever the wearer of this plus five banded armor is attacked in melee while being prone, stunned, or staggered, the attacker must pass a reflex saving throw DC 30 or suffer from the same condition for two rounds. In addition, this armor grants its wear immunity to fire and acid. Armor class is pretty good. I think Sila's is 12, might be 13 or 14. But I mean, immunity to two damage types is fantastic either way. Hmm. Oh, neat. I'll go ahead. All right, so we have to hunt down this guy on a rooftop. I don't really want Camellia in the party for that, so what I'll probably do is go back. Grab Sila. We can't do Camellia's quest until we help out. What's her face? Uh, Shavaro. Sorry, I was looking at that bridge for so long. <laughs> I'm mentally, I'm mentally and physically exhausted. The human half of Land's face looks decidedly pale. Life's a funny thing, isn't it? You find yourself in a new city, and suddenly you bump into an old acquaintance. He chuckles, but his expression is closer to a wince than a true smile. Zavalamek is here, in Aleutian Ira. Rudrak spits on the floor, grinning strangely. You felt it too, Lan. The bloodthirst. The soft whispers calling you to give you into violence. Finally paying attention, are you? Lan looks puzzled. Uh, no. I don't hear any whispers, if you know bloodthirst. 
Wendu, see a healer. I think you're just insane. Land and the Huntress glare at each other. How do you know he's an illusion Ira? Lan offers a vague shrug without looking you in the eye. I feel it. You know, it's like a scent. Uh, you smell something unusual once in your life. You remember it forever. That feeling I had in the cave when Sava Malek was turning the mongrels into beasts. It's back. Like some cloying, nasty stench just clogging up my lungs. Like I fell into a latrine and can't swim. Excuse the, the analogy. Sava who? Lan looks at you with disapproval. Very funny. I know we're surrounded by demons, and they've all got tricky names. You can't be expected to remember all of them. Zavimelech is the one who's been kidnapping mongrels for ages in the caves, and turning them into insane beasts. We've met him, a scrawny looking guy with a long tail. Assuming Zavimelech is here, where should we look for him? Now that I don't know, but this thing it seems to grow weaker and stronger as we move around. So if you put me on the scent, I'll lead you to him like a hound. All right, we'll find Sava Malek's lair together, Lan. Lan nods. The right thing to do would be to just raise this whole city to the ground. But one demon's lair will, will. But one demon's lair will do to start with. Uh, take me with you, Master. I can feel him too. My senses are more finely honed than Lan's. Sava Malek's poison runs in my veins. Never thought I'd say this, but that might not be such a bad idea. I know the way. Alright, uh, let's go and rest up. I don't understand you paladins. Well, really it's that I don't understand the huge clanking suits of armor you wear. Watch out, here comes Sir Clanks a lot, everybody. So what? So everybody knows that good is on its way to beat down evil. Hey, that's my take on it. With the enemy hear their doom approaching. All right, so we're going to have a lot of back and forth between the Follow Nexus and the city because I do want to bring the relevant companions for each quest. Right now I want Sila for both the quest that Honey Tongue gave us and that... Going past, I keep doing that. I walk right past the portal. And the quest that Shavaru gave us because we don't need any specific companions for that. Let's get rid of her, bring Sila back into the fold, and back to the middle city. Alright, so I'm going to call the episode here, and the next one we will hunt down Zurich. Or Zurich's, and then we'll, I guess... Oh yeah, we also have this to do for Shavaro, which I think, yeah, it takes place in the lower city. So third wheel, then grudges to settle in the next episode, and might even take a peek inside the Grim Mansion, see what's going on in there. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope to see you guys in the next one.